Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry. This is Nurse Misha Solis Hyphenberry. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. I'm glad to be with you this evening, but I'm especially glad to be back home with my family. I've been in Costa Rica for a week <clears throat> filming a carnivore television series. I don't know what network, and I don't know when it'll be out. <laughs> Before anybody don't even, asks. Don't ask. I don't know. As soon as I know, I'll I'll announce it first in our private group, and then eventually for all the world. Hey, Natalie, how's it going? Hey, Toby. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Cindy. It's been a long week without Ken Berry in the house, let me tell you. Tell them how bored and sad you were. <laughs> it wasn't boring. It was not boring. Two kids. How lost you were without me. I was. Just I was them, totally lost. Yes. All right, guys. Happy Monday. Hope you're all having a good New Year so far. Absolutely. Did you make some goals, resolutions, whatever you want to call them? And have you stuck to them so far? So far, so good. Hopefully. Now, for the next hour, we're going to be live answering as many questions as we can that you have about nutrition, medicine, health, diet, lifestyle. And so share this out on all your favorite social media. Let's get as many people in here as we can so we can help improve the health of the entire world. See these glasses? I feel like they're... You say that every week. Get a new pair. There. Maybe that's better. I don't I'm know. I'm going to yawn tonight. Oh, yeah. no. All right. We got a question from Cindy here. Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Over the past few weeks, I've noticed crunching in both knees when I go upstairs, and squat, and do lunges, but zero pain. So far, I've been carnivore for two years, wondering why this has suddenly started and worried it could turn into osteoarthritis at age 36. So, Cindy, the reason it's just started is because you're 36. Uh, virtually everybody over the age of 35 has uh, crunchy, snappy, grindy knees. If there's no pain and there's no uh, unsteadiness, there's no wobbliness, there's no disability, this is considered normal by the medical profession by orthopedic specialists. Uh, when I when I squat down and stand up, it sounds like somebody rubbing two sandpaper drums together, and it's done that since about my mid thirties. And uh, it, as far as anybody knows, this is not a sign of anything bad. If your ankle or your knee or your elbow or your finger pops or clicks or snaps or does any of that kind of stuff, that's virtually never a sign of disease or pathology. Good question. Oh, let's see. I got to go this way. Though. <laughs> I wish I could do it from up there. That'd be nicer, wouldn't it? Yeah. Christopher, I have had a colonoscopy, uh, CT, et cetera. Everything is clear, but my stool is still flat. What could cause this? So sometimes um, there may be a mass in your abdomen pushing on the colon, but you've had a CAT scan, so that rules that out. Sometimes there can be a tumor inside the colon but you've had a colonoscopy. So if, if you had a good scopist, that should rule that out as well. So at this point, uh, it's possible that your poop just go like that. Okay, because you've ruled out an intra-abdominal or intrapelvic tumor, if the radiologist read the report correctly, and you've ruled out an intraluminal mass with the colonoscopy. So uh, follow up with your doctor uh, and and just make sure, but it sounds to me like you ru ruled out all the bad things that it could possibly be. <clears throat> all right. Thank you very much, Vicki, for the super chat. Holly. Super sticker. Hey, Holly, thank you very much. All right. Are you going to let me be in charge of that? Or are you going to oh, you're going to reach over here and do it? <laughs> yeah. You're going to do it from over there. No. <laughs> thank you, Heidi, very much. What do you want to do? <laughs> Okay, you can do it. Oh, you do it that way. Okay, all right, fine. I'm just gonna yeah, sit back. It's like we don't do this every week. Let's take this question. Marion says, "Is nutritional yeast <clears throat> healthy?" I don't think nutritional yeast is bad for you, but if you're eating a diet full of meat and eggs with the yolk, there's nothing in nutritional yeast that's gonna help you in any way. Tia, hey, Dr. Barry and Nisha, hope you two are well. Dr. Barry is wondering if there's a way to speak to you one on one about childhood. I have a question. Yeah, uh, actually, we in our private community, there is an option for that. Uh, if you'll just go to phdhealth.community and sign up, then you can learn the details of how to how to have access to that. 
Um, you can also use the drberry.com slash community link, and that'll get you to the same place. Yep. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra, Elizabeth. Oh, oh, Olive, Olive is having a day where she needs to be with us. Here's one of our carnivore cats. <laughs> Say hi, Olive. Say hi. Amanda wants to know your thoughts on honey. Honey is delicious, and it is natural, just like every other kind of sugar in the world. Did you know that all sugar is natural? It is. Uh, sugar, uh, honey is pure sugar. It is a combination of fructose, glucose, and sucrose. And it also has some other sugars in it that you've never heard before. Uh, there is not enough nutrition in honey in the way of all the little vitamins and minerals and, and magical, magical nutrients <laughs> that they always talk about with honey to justify the sugar in the honey. If you want to have a teaspoon of honey, in your Sunday morning coffee, I think that's not a big deal. But if you think that honey's a health food and you eat it every day, you're going to be glycating many cells and tissues and Honey proteins. Honey is the proper bee diet. Yes, Made that's right. food for bees. It's for baby bees. Christina wants to know, is anyone reading Mindy Pelt's new book, Fast Like a Girl? Have you heard of this? I, I think I saw it on Instagram. I haven't read it. Greg. Thanks, we'll Greg. look into that. Yeah, you got it, girl. Thank Christy, you, Christy. Thank you. Huh. Hey, yeah. Dr. Berry, is there any multivitamin you recommend for a male about your age eating a PhD? <clears throat> is there anything better than Centrum, <laughs> etc.? Yeah, BB. Um, now you got to leave it up there because I got I'm ADHD. Not Don't it. change the question. I'm, I'm finished. I'm gonna. Aren't you glad I'm home? I'm just scrolling, man. Okay. We Bye. do this every week. Like, what are you doing? Go. So if you're eating a proper human diet, one of the definitions of a proper human diet is nutrient density in every bite. Now, that nutrient density, the nutrition is amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals. So especially if you're including two to four ounces of liver once a week in your diet, uh, you don't need to take a multivitamin at all. So as soon as you take up that bottle of Centrum, which is literally the, the worst vitamin on the face of the planet, quality-wise, don't waste your money on another multivitamin. You don't need that. Would Just you real food. recommend CoQ10? or uh, Over the age or... of uh, 40, you might benefit for some, from some CoQ10. If you're taking a prescription medication, then you need to take 200 milligrams of CoQ10 a day to kind of cancel out some of the bad effects of the, the prescription medication. If you live in a very northern or southern uh, latitude, you might need some vitamin D. If you can't get enough sun and you can't eat the vitamin D rich foods I talk about in the video on this channel. And then also iodine. It's very common for people to have low levels of iodine. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Freedom loving American. Brag report. Within two weeks of going 100% carnivore following six months of keto, my chronic hemorrhoids are gone. We Love that. We keep hearing this. And I, I was in Costa Rica hemorrhoids with are no Dr. Choice. Kiltz, uh, one of the many people down there. And Dr. Kiltz is not afraid to share. He is not I afraid of him. TMI. And he said he, when he was a, a vegan, that his, he said his hemorrhoids stuck out so far he could hang his hat on them. <laughs> true, true statement. And now that he's been carnivore for years, he literally has no hemorrhoids whatsoever. I keep hearing this over and over. And, of course, these are anecdotal reports. But when you've heard hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times the same thing happening, sounds like a pattern to me. So congratulations, freedom-loving American. Carb crusher. Hello, Dynamic Duo. I'm making Nisha Loaf right mm, now. Man, Nisha Loaf. Man. <laughs> uh, my meatloaf recipe is on my YouTube channel if you're interested. You can go check it out after you get done here. I feel like your meatloaf recipe yeah. and your keto cornbread recipe could we can literally just survive off of that. Yes, forever. that. But also, I feel like you could enter them in any cooking contest and you would take home a ribbon they are really that They're good so freaking good i mean marnie mack hey dr b someone asked me to explain why one would have a good a1c but high triglycerides are they related both to sugar carbs intake what say you yeah so many people when they adopt a proper human diet their a1c will start to come down and their triglycerides as well but sometimes the triglycerides lag behind also some Few people, about 5% of you guys, if you drink coffee the morning of your lab draw, 
your triglycerides are going to be higher. Also, if you didn't fast from between 12 to 14 hours before you had your blood draw, that can make your triglycerides high, but it won't really affect your A1C. Thank you, MC. Did you guys remember to remind Uncle Elmer and Aunt, Aunt Minnie? You know they always forget this. Send them a, send them a message right now. Stephanie, <clears throat> do you have any suggestions for the Collegard test? If you don't produce as much stool as the test requires, should I have a colonoscopy? Yeah, Stephanie, you're going to produce as much stool as it requires. It doesn't require very much stool at all. Yeah. Fanny, thank you. But you will produce less stool on a carnivore diet, <clears throat> on a ketovore diet, even on a, 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 a keto diet. You're going to produce less poop. That's absolutely true. When's Nisha's cookbook coming uh, out? I asked that just yesterday. Yeah. Nisha? In all my spare time. <laughs> as soon as I can get it out. I'm working on it. That's one of my things in 2023. By 2024, mm. there will be a book. Yeah. Dan's got a good question. You mentioned <laughs> eating organ meat. I love tongue, but you really like liver. Isn't the job of the liver to remove toxins? You want me to eat that? So, Dan, this is a very common myth, is that the liver acts as a filter. And that's completely untrue. That's not how the liver works at all. What the liver does is it tags toxins as they go by. They travel straight in the liver and straight out of the liver. And it tags them to either be pooped out or peed out. It does not store the, the toxins. It also does not act as a filter. But you'll hear that very commonly, maybe even from your doctor, because that's just a simple way to explain it. Because the liver, uh, its actual function is super complex. But it basically flags toxins so that either the kidneys or the colon know, oh, that's crap. We need to get that, that out of here. Uh, there are no toxins stored in liver. The liver does not filter toxins. Um, the link to my YouTube channel is in the show notes, or you can just type in my name. Or click in the title of this video. N-E-I-S-H-A. I'm the only, I'm the top Nisha. You are the top YouTube. Nisha. You are. Tiny B, what do you think about the high fat carnivore that everyone's talking about? 80% from fat. 20% from protein. I think for many people, that's an excellent option. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably best for people who still have uh, excess stored fat that they want to get rid of. Uh, that's probably one of the quickest ways to get it off. Sean, thanks for providing the information to reverse my depression. That is transformative stuff and so underrated by mainstream doctors. You're awesome. Huzzah. Love well done, Sean. Now teach your friends and family how to do it. Uh, Dr. Barry, is it true that you should not take vitamin D3 without the K2? This is probably not a big deal. You hear some influencers make a big deal out of it. Like you'll just, you'll just calcify up and turn into the, like, uh, <coughs> Lot's wife when she looked back. And that's <laughs> not really true. Uh, I mean, out of an abundance of caution, I do have a, a D3, K2 combo. And I think that's probably wise until we have more research. But I do, I know people who've been taking vitamin D daily for 35 years and they don't have any more calcification than anybody else. Suzanne. Hi from Quebec. I'm doing triple B and E. I wonder why I get nauseated while eating only meat. Mm. I have a hard time eating all meat. I'm mm -hmm. not hungry, but I feel like I'm not eating enough. Yep. Does that make sense? It does, Susan. So stop that. Uh, very For many women, when they start eating until satiety with very nutrient dense uh, foods full of healthy animal fat and healthy animal protein, the satiety signal will come through as mild nausea. Like, ooh, I'm a little, ugh, okay? Because your body's not used to getting slammed with that much nutrition all at one time. Does that make sense? Now, as you continue beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, that's what BBB and E stands for, folks. You're going to, that's going to just peter out and go away. And then you'll just be, you'll have this overwhelming sense of, oh, I'm full. I couldn't eat another bite. Because that's what you're really feeling. But it's taking your body a minute to interpret that. Uh, and, and so also don't worry that you're not eating enough. If you're still overweight or obese, I don't know what you look like. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, then you eat to satiety and then you stop. Your body will take care of the, the rest. Will says I ordered from White Oak Pastures last Man, Thursday. You cannot beat White Oak Pastures. I was talking to Will Harris the other day. He is a, a gentleman's gentleman and a rancher's rancher. Mm -hmm. I love that guy. There's a link with a discount in the show notes. Show something. notes yeah. Right. Yeah. We love them. Their uh, ranch is in Georgia, yeah, so I consider all that local. U.S. <clears throat> raised, all their meat comes <clears throat> from the United States. It's all properly treated. 
cows eat grass, chicken eat grass and bugs. That's all their meat is is treated humanely and uh, ancestrally. They've got a wide variety of oh, choices God, yes. too. And they also have ground beef with liver and heart ground up in it. Mm -hmm. And it is delicious, and you cannot taste the, the liver or the heart. Angela, iodine drops, what time of day should I take them? Should I take them with thyroid medication or in a different time? It doesn't matter. Just put it in the first uh, glass or cup of liquid that you drink each morning. That way you've got it done. You didn't forget it. It's out of the way. MC, keto, 15 grams of total carbs a day. I can't get into or stay in ketosis unless workout heavy in the morning. Verified blood meter. Uh, two times daily, A1C 4.8, that's gorgeous. TSH 3.3, glucose 87, that's gorgeous. LDL 127, HDL 32.3, that's still, still a little low. Uh, triglycerides 431. So MC, you may be one of those people like me who has to go as close to zero carb as you can. You may need to turn down the carbohydrate intake down to ketovore or even carnivore. And that will also get those triglycerides down. And I, I, I fear that you're counting 15 grams of net carbs a day because it's hard to get triglycerides of 433 if you fasted long enough before the blood test on 15 total grams a day. Hey, Nina. I know it's probably pronounced Nina, but Nana Marie was my grandma's name. Nana so. Marie. Oh, yeah. Um, From Avondale, Arizona. Love you both. Oh, thanks. Jay. Jay. Doing ketovore since October. I keep carbs under 30. You need to keep them lower to be ketovore. Yeah, to that's, be clear. that's keto. Um, you go on with the last. Total <laughs> cholesterol, 157, HDL 61, LDL 81, triglyceride 70 before starting. Now total cholesterol, 432, HDL 66, LDL 352, and triglyceride 70, A1C 4.9. Homo hour 0.82. Doc said back, uh, back of carnivore. Back off carnivore, no, I think is what he meant to say. No, your, your A1C is every lab that you should care about is splendiferous here. Your total cholesterol went up. Yes, and your LDL cholesterol went up. They're almost exactly what mine are. Uh, but I don't think that's a risk factor for heart attack and stroke. I've got a, a video on this channel that I did a few weeks back called How Not to Die of a Heart Attack. Watch that video. And that'll help you calm down, Jay. But also there's research in the show notes you can print out and take to your doctor so he'll stop saying stupid stuff like back off carnivore. Oh, sorry. It's a good question. Abby? Yep. I actually have a video on this channel. How do we know when we're How fat How to know adapted? when you're fat adapted. I have one on my channel, yeah, too. Yeah, we both, we both <laughs> have. You know, so check those videos afterwards. And uh, it's, it's a few subjective things, that just how you feel. But watch those videos. They'll, they'll answer that for you. All right. Robert, 61-year-old. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Monovisc. It's like the Synvisc injection, I guess, in, his, in your knee. Is that where you're getting it, Robert? What supplements or foods are good for joint health? Uh, so just go to my YouTube channel and type in collagen <clears throat> and watch the videos of collagen-rich foods. Those are the supplements you need. You don't need to spend a penny on any supplement for your cartilage or your collagen you just need to eat a certain specific list of foods and i've got a video about that teresa nisha you look beautiful thank you right uh thank you for all your info my daughter-in-law had too much stress to ever get pregnant she's been keto and lost stress weight and has just had a positive pregnancy test times two yeah. congratulations yeah. you guys don't believe me but keto will get you pregnant yeah, yeah keto will. carnival will get you pregnant <laughs> real pregnant along with you know the other Right, not right. Right, obviously. right. Yeah. <laughs> Bar Barry. Barry Burnett. Howdy, Dr. Barry and Nisha. I've had two family members diagnosed with POTS in the last few months. Can PhD help with this? Yeah, we've had a lot of people with POTS uh, report a dramatic decrease in symptoms. Uh, make sure you're getting plenty of salt and uh, just either pick one keto, keto, or carnivore and do it for 90 days while you're continuing to uh, follow your doctor's recommendations. But I think at the end of that 90 days, Barry, you'll be very happy. Trap, Trap God. God. Got RSV recently. Recovery is taking longer than uh, time. Is fasting good for recovery or should oh, I yeah. eat ketovore? Unsure, staying away from antibiotics. Yeah, either way. Now, first of all, you were probably misdiagnosed. Even if you had a positive RSV 
swab. Uh, RSV is just a cold in adults. Now, in very small children, RSV can be very severe and even life-threatening because their air passages are so tiny. But in an adult, RSV is just a cold. So you probably had something else that was causing this. But yes, you probably had RSV. And, and that's exactly else. right. And but uh, fasting is great for recovery, especially if you don't have an appetite yet trap. Just don't eat until your appetite truly comes back. And then when it does come back, go keto boy, 100 percent. Ron Navy, I came across your videos and haven't been able to stop watching Thanks, them. Ron. I'm a metabolic mess, high risk on meds for blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, high triglycerides, and I'm obese. Try and carnivore diet because Absolutely. of your videos and others. That You're on the right track, Ron. You've come to the right place. If you need more support uh, on the banner down at the bottom of the screen is our private community where there's uh, about 3,000 other people just like you. We've got a part two here. Ah, part two. Go ahead. Third day on it, I noticed my sugar staying mostly around 128. They were upper 180s and 200 before. I do drink coffee with a small amount of whole milk. How long do I wait to get a new metabolic panel? Three months after you start, Ron, go back and get your labs rechecked. And as soon as you run out of the whole milk, buy heavy cream from now on to put in your coffee. Don't put milk in your coffee. Milk's got too much sugar in it. Fino Barbadell. Love, Love that, that profile Love picture it. too. June 2022, I was 189 pounds, size 12. I'm five foot tall. Today, I'm 154 and a size two. Huzzah! Huzzah! Still five foot tall though. <laughs> oh, you didn't grow. A keto from June to August and carnivore from August and yeah. now. Well done. When you're a kid, you grow. But when you're an adult, you grow. So I'm glad you're not growing. Melissa, go. Reverse uh, T3, 25.3. T3 free. Uh, 4.1, T4 free, 126, TSH 1.8, TPO 75, and TGA antibody 18. Some of these are high and borderline. Yeah, you you have Hashimoto's. Whether you need medicine or not will be, depend on how severe your symptoms are and the discussion that you have with your doctor, Melissa. Diane, I saw Anisha put iodine in her coffee. Do we actually need an iodine supplement mm -hmm. if we're eating carnivore or ketovore? Excellent question. So, Iodine is, a, is an element. It's, it's a mineral, right? It comes from the soil. That's where it comes from. So if you're eating a cow that grazed on grass that grew in soil that didn't have any iodine, will there be any iodine in that cow? This is not a trick question. No, no there will not be. Because, and so there are large regions of the continental U.S. That, that the soils are very, very depleted of iodine. It's typically soils that are very far from the ocean, so kind of the center of the continent. Uh, so out of an abundance of caution, we recommend that everybody, because you don't know where your meat comes from. Where did your, where did your cow come from? Do you know? If you don't know, then you really don't know, right? So put a drop in your coffee each morning. That way you're getting 2,500 mics of iodine that your body can use. And if you don't need it, your, your kidneys will just pee it right out. Oh, we got, we got Ron. Coach. Hey coach, since going full carnivore, I noticed a change in my body odor and have bad BO now. This is the first time I've ever heard this. I sweat for hours some mornings without working out. Thoughts, please. Maybe oxalate dumping? Maybe, but if you're if you're just like sitting in your chair at your normal thermostat setting and you're sweating, you need to go see your doctor because that that's, that's definitely not from carnivore. Now, carnivore will increase people's metabolic rates, but not to the point where you're just sitting in the chair dripping sweat. And I've never, the, I hear 100% of the time, that my body odor got better on carnivore, le less noticeable. So, well, I, I mean, I did get the meat sweats at first, but that didn't last very long. It was random. Right. But you were never just sitting in a, car a chair dri dripping with sweat. Not dripping. No. Yeah. <clears throat> Declan. Declan, I had a high cholesterol result, nine overall, LDL of eight. I requested a test for LDL breakdown. My doctor was skeptical, but arranged it sourcing a clinic for me, what other tests would you recommend? So in the book, Common Sense Labs, I've got all the tests that I recommend. There is a link down in the show notes that you can check that out. Carnivorous me, if you guys don't oh, follow her, yes. go subscribe to her YouTube Seven channel right today. now. All right. She's amazing. She's this woman is on a transformation journey. She's sharing. She's sharing. She's, she's putting she herself putting out, it there. out there. Yep. Good job. Uh, Kathy, carnivore since October, and I'm losing weight, my main goal, but have terrible GERD and GERD. see no improvement. Would love to come off my Nexium. Mm. So it may be that it's not time yet for you to come off your Nexium. Uh, one way to know is to just start taking the Nexium or Prilosec or Prevacid 
or Zagrid, start taking it every other day. And what many people find is my heart burns no worse when I when I take it every other day than it is when I take it every day. And that way you just cut your medication use in half. Try that. And if that works, great. If not, then go back to taking it daily for now and try it again in a month. Gerald. Thank, thank you, you, Gerald. Diane. What supplement and doses should I take to help with digestion? No gallbladder and having some greasy acid reflux. Yeah. So if you're just converting to a keto, <laughs> ketobore, carnivore diet, you might take one uh, bottle full of ox bile supplement. But I wouldn't recommend taking that long term. Virtually nobody needs that. Uh, but that's probably going to help you with the, the fat digestion until your liver is able to ramp up bile production. Enrolled in the Primal Health, excited to make a difference. Oh, Tammy, going to be a Tammy, health coach. fellow Primal Health coach over I here. It. I it's love a great it. program. I was very happy with that. Christopher, thank you. Conrad, that's a good name. Conrad, Conrad with a K. Sue. Hey, Sue, after 104 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, A1C went from 5.9 to 6.1. So disappointed. Why? Also, TSH from normal to high. Is it related? Uh, so probably you're eating a, a carnivore diet that is not high enough in fat. You're eating uh, too much protein and not enough fat. So it's most likely what happened with A1C. <clears throat> There's also always a chance of lab error. Also, I think that red blood cells are built of better materials when you're a carnivore. And you, at 104 days, you have replaced virtually all your red blood cells. And so if they live 130 days instead of 110 days, they're going to have more time to glycate. It's a theory. That's a theory, theory. yeah. Uh, and the TSH from normal to high, I need to see the numbers and I need to know your symptoms to know if that matters or not. Sometimes TSH can just go up two tenths, three tenths of a point or down just randomly. It changes constantly. Tony, new advocate member and first time YouTube. Hey, Roger Tony. Lies matter, Tony. Can I stop my atrovastatin cold turkey with no complications? All you guys, if you're taking Zocor, Lipitor, Crestor, you can go and throw it in the garbage right now. After discussing it with your provider. I'm, no. After discussing no. it with Throw your it in provider, the garbage. It at is least junk. let your provider know because this is not medical advice. That's right. Advice. This is not medical advice. But I'm just at telling all. you the research is, is, is laughable. It's a waste of your money. It's causing side effects you don't need. You don't have to wean it down. Cold turkey's fine. <clears throat> Check with your doctor. That was for you. Just believe. Total cholesterol 212, triglycerides 152. Am I good for carnivore? Having a hard time getting started. Any tips on fighting through the first few days? I'm a total carb addict. So the first step is, is calling it what it is and looking in the mirror and saying, I'm a carboholic. And it's going to take three to 14 days for you to get through the withdrawal symptoms. And then you'll be able to carnivore just fine. Uh, your triglycerides are going to come way down after three months of carnivore. Go get them rechecked. Luke. Luke said, oh, no, it's this Susan, Susan. <laughs> PhD community member. Hey, Woo! Susan, can't even tell you how much you have saved my life. A year and a half ago, A1C was 11.7 and is now sitting around 6.0. Slowly getting there. Closing, clothing size went from a size 18 to a size 6. Huzzah! Kim Susan. Sutton, Susan. welcome back, girl. Hey, Kim. CAC score was zero. TTL 285, triglycerides 99, HDL 38, LDL 30. Is this all good? Doc is talking about statins. I said nope. No, you don't need a statin. You need to eat more meat, Kim Sutton. She's been eating that meat. I know she has. Her LDL was 230. Yeah, yeah. And so, Kim, uh, in my video that I just did about LDL cholesterol, there's the research link down in the show notes. Print that out and take to your doctor and say, Doc, look, it looks to me like the sweet spot here is is, is a LDL of 100 to 230. That's where people will have the, the lowest hazard ratio. Why are you wanting to make me more likely to die by lowering my LDL? Farman, thank you. And I'm glad I saw your question because last week when you asked this, the feed went dead and we were not able to talk about this and it's a very important I subject. I can't believe you, you saw the comment. I know. That's awesome. Okay. So let's talk about sugar and Alzheimer's. Yeah. Is there a link? Is it related? Can we yes. help this? There is this an is absolute question. link between sugar in the diet and the risk of Alzheimer's. Uh, now this sugar, this is sugar in any form. This is sugar from sugar, but also from bread, from potatoes, from fruits, uh, fruit juices, especially from Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew, any of that sugar is going to increase the risk of 
Alzheimer's. Uh, our good friend Amy Berger wrote a book called The Alzheimer's Antidote. I think anybody with a family history of Alzheimer's should read that book. Uh, Dr. Mary Newport, her husband developed Alzheimer's and she used a ketogenic protocol to greatly improve and lessen his Alzheimer's symptoms. Uh, absolutely. And I, I actually have a video on this channel about Alzheimer's and uh, you can check that out as well with links in the show notes. Amy's book was uh, one of the first things that I focused on when I started doing like health coaching and stuff. I had a book, remember I yeah, had a book, book club, club yeah, and yeah. that was the first book we did. <coughs> it was really great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, you're, you're not doing it over here. I'll do it. Too. Hey, I am doing something. I have a plan here. DLS, I had trouble breastfeeding my baby last time because of my Pico. So I'm pregnant again. Is there any way to assure success with quantity of breast milk this time around? So you want to make sure that you don't have one of the rare things that uh, also come along with that, which is like your breast tissue is, uh, and it can't make, it's just you're physically. So if you just think it's from the Picos, then this time around, you shouldn't have any problems. But I really want you to consider getting a lactation consultant before baby comes. Go and get a full consultation. It should be at least an hour, if not longer, so she can really educate you on what boosts supply, which is skin to skin contact and that baby feeding and, and taking as much milk out as it needs for your body to know it needs to make more. It's a supply and demand thing. And that's the main way you can increase your supply. But going in feeling confident and not, not you know, fearful because of last time you really want that support, <clears throat> that's going to help you more than anything. Yep. So find a good one in your area and uh, look for look for some support. Yeah, eat lots of meat, lots of fat, lots of protein, drink water if you're thirsty and get your consult and you'll do great. Colin, how do I alleviate keto flu? I've had chills and diarrhea. Yeah, so uh, you may actually have a virus if you're having chills, uh, but chills can be part of a withdrawal symptom. You need plenty of electrolytes, you need plenty of salt, you need to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. You do not need to portion control at all. And then you need to realize that keto flu or carbohydrate withdrawal lasts somewhere between three to 14 days. And after that, it'll be gone and it'll never come back. Sheldon, can seafood come <clears throat> the iodine need? I actually have a video. And a seafood carnivore. Yeah, it's absolutely. And I've got a video on this channel about iodine rich foods. And yes, seafood is carnivore. <clears throat> it absolutely is. In fact, it <clears throat> should be part of your carnivore diet, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Even if it's just sardines or anchovies. At least once or twice a week. You need to have some sardines. Kel, love you both. Hi, Kel. When I start craving sweets, I start watching your videos and it gets me back on track. She sees me going. <laughs> Book. Having read your book, I wonder what your thoughts on taking a course of antibiotics if bitten by a deer tick yeah. that could transmit Lyme disease. Yeah. So the first question, Buck, is, is, is Lyme disease, is it caused by a bacteria? And if you don't know the answer to that, then you need to look it up. And then that will answer your question. Uh, antibiotics are only effective against bacteria. They do not work against viruses or fungus or spirochetes, or any other any other thing. They work against bacteria. Ron Navy says, thanks, Doc. I also ordered some of the electrolytes you have mentioned. Is there anything else I should take? And lastly, I've always had low HDL around 20 doing carnivore. Is there a chance that this will rise? Definitely, yeah. Eat lots of fatty red meat and lift heavy things, Ron. That's mm -hmm. going to get your HDL up. Uh, anything else he needs to take besides the uh, electrolytes? The, the the hopefully you got the mineral drops uh, and then uh, vitamin D depending on where you live and try to eat liver once a week and you got it. This has been in the comments a lot of times, so I'm going to talk. It's Kylie Jenner lip kit candy K. I don't love her, but this is a really great lipstick and it stays on forever. <clears throat> it's my favorite lipstick. Maybe I need some. Time. Patricia, hello, Barry family. Have you ever heard of the sad diet yeah. creating nasal polyps? I've been on the keto board challenge since January 1. Yep. They seem to have shrunk, but I still can't smell anything. Yeah, uh, polyps in the colon, in the sinuses, in the nasal cavities, in other places are almost always caused by two things, chronic inappropriate inflammation and chronic hyperinsulinemia. Those give the false growth signal for things like polyps to grow. And when you stop those two things, these polyps and lipomas and lots of other things, skin tags included, just start to shrink and go away. 
Betsy Rose in the chat. PhD community is wonderful. Hey, hey. We, oh, y'all, there's so many of you in there already. Like, I can't believe it. If you're doing the Keto Board Challenge and you're watching this live, tell everybody what you think. And be honest. If you hate it and you think it yep. sucks, say that. It's fine. But if you love it, you know, share your experience in there and let people know what they're missing. Neil Burchip says, huzzah! Uh -huh. Also in the community. Dewan, use digestive enzymes to supplement no fillers, my carnivore diet to heal colitis. Cramps were bad after a couple of days. Should I keep using these to help? Uh, it depends. Why are you taking digestive enzymes? Unless you have a pancreatic problem, you probably don't need them at all. Uh, I think he told us last week something. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember, remember though. I can't was. remember. But uh, if if they were prescribed by your doctor, then you probably need them because you probably had previous uh, pancreatitis or something. But most, the vast majority of people, unless they've had chronic pancreatitis or recurrent pancreatitis, they don't need digestive enzymes. In the Keto Board Challenge, I've made up some terms that are going to get thrown around. I feel like because yeah. there's so many people in that group now, there's yeah. like two thousand people in there. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to make a video that's like what a flex day is, what intuitive fasting means, and like all these things that I'm teaching that I just made them up. They're not keeping like, it real. keto with Rebecca, <laughs> daughter, 15 years old, uh, HFASD, was on Abilify off for a while now, started to show signs of Cushing. She's been keto, keto for over a year and difficulty losing weight. Have you heard of this? Other than labs, any advice? Um, so... Okay, gotcha. So she may have to go ketovore or even carnivore if her if her weight is being sticky. Um, inside of our, our community, we talk about all the labs that she would need. Also in the book, Common Sense Labs. Um, but actually Abilify can actually, in some people, bring on Cushing's like signs and symptoms. And so... Uh, the, the Abilify and the other antipsychotics are quite <clears throat> habit forming. So hopefully with, with dietary changes, you'll be able to keep her off that and uh, hopefully be able to get her weight down soon. Yeah. Pamela, you can still join the challenge because the way I have it built, you can, it's uh, in a course. So you can start at day one today where we're actually on day nine, but you can go at your own pace and look at all the videos and you can, you can go <clears throat> ahead and do that. And then, uh, February, we're going to do triple B and E challenge. And uh, the, the challenges come with your membership. So it's not like an add on. You don't have to pay anything more. So if you join for $5, you get access to the challenges and and whatever Dr. Barry is doing too. So. Yep. Gail, keto for three years, carnivore for four months. Uh, T3 levels dropped to 1.9 other thyroid labs within normal limits. I guess you're saying you have thyroid nodules with Lugol's help. Yes, that most assuredly, either the daily minerals with iodine included and or uh, Lugol's 2% would, would help with the strength of nodules. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, Mitzi Champion, very true. Alzheimer's is also known as type 3 diabetes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cut the sugar, cut the carbs. Gail, video idea, speak directly to teens about PhD. You know, I've tried making several videos <clears throat> for teens. YouTube, literally, you know, some of my videos have millions of views. And if I make a video about acne or about some other teenage topic, it gets 20,000 views. They don't want to look at him and listen. Yeah. They want to look at some they wanna, hot girl. They want to hear Kylie Jenner talk about With it. her green juice. That's yeah, what they want. That, they seriously. can't help it. It's not their it, fault. It, right, but it's sad but true. Sad yeah. but true. I would love to do that. And I'm going to try to start making shorts. Uh, that's the little short form video on YouTube because more young people watch that. I'm going to try to reach them that way. We'll see how it goes. The keeper. Hello, watch video on finding a keto dog. Trouble finding one in western Wisconsin. Anyone have suggestions? My wife and I are on keto board, keto board challenge doing well. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anybody know a, doc, a keto friendly doc in western yeah, Wisconsin? Feel free to share. Put it in the comments. If Actually, you're in the group, which you are, then we, we're going to make a space for those of you to tell everyone else about your doctor, where they're located. And what, if you like them, why do you like them, what they've done for you? So within our yep. community, we're trying to make our own directory. 
that uh, will help you guys find yeah. someone close. But any you. everybody watching, if you found a low carb keto carnivore friendly doctor, put their name in the city in the comments so that other people can benefit from them as well. Tiny. I had terrible nights. What's in the beginning of carnivore? My doctor ruled out everything. Turns out eating lots of meat close to bedtime is not for me. Yeah. Last meal at 5 p.m. and yes. no more sweats. Yeah, there and, you go. and all you guys should stop eating about three hours before bedtime. The research tends to show that that's the healthiest way, not just for heartburn and reflux, but for many other things as well. And a lot of people, when they start eating a lot more meat than they're used to eating, they'll have they'll have the meat sweats for a few days until their body acclimates. C Perkins, I've been eating keto for a year. I look got labs done. I'm super high in APOB that keto, keto cardiologists say is super bad. What can I do to lower it? So first of all, the APOB uh, lab test that you hear everybody crowing about, the reason everybody's talking about it is because it's relatively new, which means that it's very sexy and new and it's a hot topic, but also it means it hasn't been it hasn't proven that by the test of time yet. It's still kind of experimental and I'm wholly unimpressed with it as a marker for heart disease, I would keep eating a proper human diet and recheck the APOB every three months and uh, see what it does. But I think what we, you're going to find, like many other tests over the, the last few decades, it came out as like, oh, this is it. This is the end all be all. Then two years later, you never hear it mentioned again. And I predict that's what's going to happen with APOB and many of the other tests that uh, people are trying to talk about now. Uh, for Sherry said... Doc said her TG. Triglycerides are 975. Uh, yeah, so if your triglycerides are 975, that is very dangerous. That's increasing your risk for a heart attack. You need to go on a very, very low carbohydrate diet to lower those down. KS Gomez, what's the difference in ketovore and keto? Is the current challenge only carnivore? Are you having a keto one? Do you have meal plans in the PhD community? Okay, first question. Ketovore versus keto. Keto is very flexible. You can do product keto. You can do dirty, lazy, rotten keto. You can do lots of dairy on keto. You, you can basically just eat as much vegetables as you want. And, you know, and, you know, people count total carbs and they count net carbs. It's a bit it's very flexible at this point. Ketovore is there. I really dive deep in the challenge, by the way into this there's like seven videos you did really a great job. everything you did a great job 10 grams that. total carbs is your as your maximum limit every single day and you should only eat vegetables with one meal two days a week the rest of your week should be carnivore this is the challenge version okay and seasonings and sauces are allowed where on carnivore seasonings and sauces are kind of restricted and you should stay away from them. You really only use salt and butter and dairy. Uh, you're allowed, but you should limit it and measure it. Um, count the carbs in your seasonings and sauces and stuff like that. So that's the challenge. That's, that's the short version. It's a little bit more complicated than that. The lifestyle version, which I do, is at a certain point when you're doing the challenge, if you decide to keep going, you should do triple B and E to reset your body and to a reintroduction. So you're doing triple B and E as an elimination diet to reintroduce the foods one at a time to better understand what you're sensitive to, to build your own ketovore. So my ketovore consists of mostly meat most days, but then I allow for onions, garlic seasoning, sauces, some tomatoes every now and then, some avocado every now and then, because I know those vegetables don't cause me serious issues where you after your elimination diet, when you reintroduce foods, may find that onions do affect you, dairy affects you, things that you didn't understand were causing you inflammation or, in fact, causing you problems. So yep. it's a process and a lifestyle. Yep. <laughs> and you can do in the challenge if somebody wanted to just do carnivore, couldn't they? There are yep. women in That's the group doing carnivore, mm -hmm. yes, <clears throat> because carnivore is ketovore, uh, but ketovore isn't carnivore. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. <laughs> Joshua, hi. I recently diagnosed with colon cancer. I want to jump onto the carnivore diet, but was told I need to increase calorie intake prior to surgery. Seems impossible if I only eat protein. So you're under the misconception, Joshua, that a carnivore diet is just protein. I want you eating fatty cuts of meat. A carnivore diet is fat and protein. And you're going to be getting plenty of calories, as if calories mean anything. That Calories are a false paradigm. Uh, but I don't want you eating skinless, boneless chicken breast. That's that's not even carnivore. That's wussy boar. I want you eating ribeye and 70-30 and ground beef. 
I want you eating fatty cuts of meat. Thank you, Carissa. Larry, forgive me for changing the subject, but can you use in place of fluoride? So do you feel that... It's a very important to me. Do you feel like fluoride is important for your health, Larry? For what exactly, Larry, are you wanting to use it for? Yeah, yeah. what can you what use can in, you place, use of in place of fluoride? Like, what do you think fluoride does for you? If I just say why he doesn't need fluoride. Yeah, so we we'll don't we don't use... All of our toothpaste is is non-fluoridated toothpaste. Uh, our water is reverse osmosis. Um, I have I have strong opinions about fluoride being put into people's water, and uh, which we'll talk about another day. But you don't need anything to replace fluoride, Larry. Uh, somebody asked, do we count the carbs in liver and eggs? No, I don't think that's necessary for most people. However, if you're doing true pure carnivore and you think that you need to, then, you know, go for it. Yeah. I Thank just did you, that. Why? Well, stop sliding. Did you I slide? didn't touch I anything. Y'all did. saw me. I did not touch nothing. Vicky, my husband started a PhD nine months ago and was diagnosed with polycythemia vera. And his doctor suggests a low fat diet. Do you suggest this? And what else do you suggest? No, I suggest he keep eating a proper human diet because he deserves all the benefits that come from eating a proper human diet. Jonna, I love in the counter. Oh, ah, Jonna. Uh, Tanya, Dr. B, do you know anything about trigeminal little neuralgia? Bit. Trigeminal neuralgia. My husband was diagnosed with it. It's extremely painful. Yes, uh, sometimes it can be so severe that people have committed suicide. Uh, would love to see a video about it. <clears throat> We have both been on the challenge since uh, 1123. Excellent, excellent. I'm glad you guys are in the group. So, trigeminal neuralgia is a temporary inflammation of the trigeminal nerve. And, and it could be of the nerve root or the nerve itself. Nobody really knows. We think it's probably viral in origin. It's usually self limited, it usually goes away. Uh, most docs will want to give you a, like an antiviral and a steroid to kind of calm down. That's going to help the symptoms. Uh, but but the research is equivocal whether it makes it go away quicker or not. It's almost never permanent. So uh, just tell him to have have faith and have hope. It, it's not going to be long term. It's usually just a few days or a few weeks. Ron, good question. I hate liver. Could I eat liver worst as a sub or is that bad? Liver makes me bad. So as a sub, if you mean with bread, then yeah, that's bad. But substitute. You, oh, substitute. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you could absolutely <laughs> liver worse. Uh, what's the other thing we used to get all the time? Liver pate, liver, liver mousse. Liver pate, liver mousse. Any of that stuff is totally fine. Oh, what is the other one that we used to get? Can't remember. Oh, gosh, I don't know. This one. Oaktown, please explain possibly in detail how NSAIDs slow and prevent weight loss, even when carnivore. Thank you both for all you do. So I've got a, a pretty long video on this channel about all of the negative things that happen if you take an anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen, naproxen, Aleve, Motrin, uh, Advil. If you take those every day, it can cause all kinds of really nasty things to happen in your body. And for many people, it, it, they feel like it slows down their weight loss as well. So watch that video and, and that'll help you. Braunschweiger, yes. Yeah, Braunschweiger. That's, That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, a 45-year-old, 314 pounds, A1C 5.8, triglycerides 360, good cholesterol 29, bad cholesterol 109, thyroid is normal. I've been doing ketovore for the last three months and have lost 58 pounds. Awesome. Good, Going good, to do good. blood yep. work at the end of January. Make sure you're getting the full thyroid panel when you go, not just your TSH. So Absolutely. TSH, free T3, free T4, antibodies. Yeah, TG antibody, and TPO antibody. Yeah. yeah, and Carissa, you're doing a great job. Yes. Uh, this it, this may be taking longer than you would like, but you understand at 45 years of age, all you guys know, what's the average for a 45-year-old woman weight change over the course of the year? The average woman gains one to four pounds over the course of a year when she's 45. Uh, Carissa's lost how much? 58. 58 pounds? It's amazing. Huzzah. Carissa, huzzah. Say it yourself at home. James, keto carnivore for five years, lost 162 pounds. Awesome. I want to see down from 6.5 to 5.2. Huzzah. Lily got some foamy urine, creatine, albumin ratios, 475, EGFR 84. It has improved from lab six mm -hmm. weeks ago. Advice to help this. Keep doing exactly what you're doing, keto carnivore. Uh, we've seen so many people with stage one, two, and three, and a few with stage four chronic kidney disease improve their kidney function <clears throat> by eating a meat-heavy keto or a carnivore diet. 
So keep doing what you're doing, and all these things are going to continue to get better. Yeah, uh, Dia says, loving the ketovore challenge. I've been working on carnivore sometimes, let in the G since November, and the daily updates and encouragement from Nisha is invaluable. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, She's a I've great been there. Coach. Every day during the week, I take the weekends off, but I actually was in there on Sunday too. So, <laughs> Ginger, I'm having some mid to low back pain, like my liver or kidneys are inflamed. Is this normal for a keto or beginner? Yeah, this pain has nothing to do with the diet that you're eating. If, if the pain uh, persists or it gets worse, you need to go see your doctor. Yeah. The proper human diet doesn't cause uh, low back pain. Michelle, recently diagnosed with interstitial cystitis. Oh my God, yes. Would carnivore help relieve yes, these symptoms? Yes. Just in Costa Rica, filming a carnivore television show, and two of the women there used to have severe interstitial cystitis. And for one of them, that's the reason she went carnivore. And now as carnivores, it's literally like they never had it. It's completely and totally gone. Yes, yes. I have to... Oh, okay. Uh, Kimberly was keto, had to stop due to gout diagnosis. So why did you think you had to stop since you got a diagnosis of gout? Because the foods on keto don't, don't cause gout. Prescri prescribed colchizine 0.6 daily, been three months. You're still taking colchizine three months later? That's that's completely inappropriate if that's what you mean. Colchizine is an is a inset. You only take that during flare-ups. You don't take that long term. Uh, red meats do not cause gout. So don't worry about that. Seafood does not cause gout. I actually have a video on this channel, Kimberly, about gout and what causes it. And uh, you absolutely can keep eating keto or even carnivore. Uh, but if you're still taking cultures in three months later, you need to call your doctor in the morning and ask them why they still have you on it. An, an NSAID, a very strong uh, and said that's very, very mean to your gastrointestinal system. Ask them why they still have you on that three months later, because that is not standard of care. Whitney, are branch chain amino acids good or bad? I actually bought an electrolyte with it, and I've watched videos and have gotten mixed advice. So, Whitney, I get my amino acids, branch and otherwise, from eating meat and eggs. That's where you should get your amino acids branched and otherwise from as well. Um, I, I don't know why anybody would add branched chain amino acids to an electrolyte drink. That's that that's kind of overkill. You, you want to get your amino acids from me. Dwayne, I had a CT scan two years ago that showed a 50% blockage in one spot of an artery, but all else looks good. This is day four on the carnivore diet. Excellent day. Continue. Christian, A1C is 5.8 up from 5.5. I've been carnivore for a year. I only eat beef, beef, bacon, butter, and beef and eggs. I can't you still got it wrong. <laughs> you suggested that I get a fasting insulin and a C-peptide and a CRP. They are all within normal limits. Gotcha. So it, if my theory is correct, you're one of those people who, who, who's red blood cells on a carnivore diet now live 120, 130 days. And that <laughs> that's going to show up as more glycation. Uh, of the red blood cell. Gina? Gina, I've been on ketobor for one year trying to heal psoriasis. I'm curious if I need to go 100% carnivore with no coffee. My question is what meats are the most healing for psoriasis? So Gina, it's not that there's particular meats that are more healing. What helps the psoriasis go away? Psoriasis is caused by plants and it's different plants for different people. And so when it, it, the, the answer for you is when you removed all of the offending plants, that's when your psoriasis is going to get better than it's been for years, if not decades. Now, it, is your psoriasis better on ketobor? If it is, can keep going. But if it's not, then you probably need to do 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs and see if you can't get that psoriasis better than you ever dreamed it would be again. Take all the dairy out. And all the dairy, yep, and the coffee, yes. If you really want to just make it go virtually away. And then at the end of that 90 days, it's just 90 days. You can do anything for 90 days. Then you can experiment and say, okay, let me add back coffee and see if my, my little Herald patch comes back. If it does, then coffee's a no-no. If it doesn't come back, then maybe you can have coffee. And you can keep experimenting like that until you figured out a list of foods that are absolutely no-goes and foods that don't seem to flare it up. Diamond Gal, I have a question. Can you explain why you recommend Lugol's and not Nas Nascent iodine? It's just the one I have the most experience, experience with recommending and using myself. I think uh, there are some uh, brands of nascent iodine that are completely fine. I don't think there's any magic in either one of them. I think they're equally fine. 
So this is a great question, Ed. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Is it safe to do carnivore long term if grass fed, grass finished is not available? Does grain fed raise inflammation markers? Not to any meaningful degree. I was talking about this very issue with Dr. Chafee and Dr. Kiltz down in Costa Rica. And uh, it is pretty well established that uh, grass fed, grass finished beef is a little better, about 3% 3, 3 better than grain finished beef. Uh, but the cheapest grain finished beef that you can buy grazed on grass for 80% of its life. Uh, it, it matters a tiny bit, but it's not, a, not enough to worry about. Larry says, oh. okay, go ahead. Okay. So Larry uh, says he agrees with me on fluoride. The dental place just got through, just informed me that I have to have implants, gave me a strong fluoride toothpaste. I'm not about to do this. Well, uh, Larry, if you are very, very careful not to swallow the fluoride, and rinse your mouth thoroughly, as in five to seven times after you finish, it's it's probably fine to use that. Uh, and the, the fluoride applied directly to the teeth, there is some research that shows that that may strengthen teeth. He's but, gonna have implants, so. Uh, right, I don't, under, yeah, I'm still confused, Larry, but the he swallowing, doesn't want to use it. The swallowing of the fluoride is what causes the problem, and it also doesn't help teeth in any way. Like, like dentists and pediatricians tell moms to give their newborns fluoridated water to protect their teeth that they don't have and that the ones they do get are going to fall it's just ridiculous so you but, don't have to use it is what he's saying yeah, yeah you don't have to use it if you're getting implants uh, my sister's morbidly obese and is now using exogenous ketones thoughts your sister i uh, i know you love her and she's wasting her money she needs to make her own ketones by eating a low enough carbohydrate diet. She needs to be eating less than 20 total grams of carbohydrates a day. And then she'll make all of her own ketones for free. Thank you. April. They're not dangerous. They're just a waste of money. All right. Any last words and announcements? Um, I've got a, a long list of video ideas. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I have an announcement. Oh, you got an announcement? Right. Okay, so KetoCon 2023. Mm. It's coming up, guys. It's coming up. It's going to be We're in gonna be there. Austin? April, Austin. You can use uh, discount code Barry for $50 off. I don't know what the price is right now, but that applies. The longer you wait, the higher the prices go up, basically. So get your ticket now if you want to take an Ussy with Nisha. <laughs> with Dark Bear. He'll, we have a booth. Uh, so we are going to be hanging out there at the booth. You can take a picture. You can get your book signed. You can buy a book. I think we might have t-shirts and stuff like that. KetoCon is the biggest one that we've ever been to. People I mean, there's was. a lot yeah. of people there and a lot of vendors. I think uh, Keto Chow is going to be there. Redmond's will probably be there. Carnivore Crisps will probably be there too. By the way, yeah. there's a discount code for Carnivore Crisps too. It's it's berry too, actually. It's B E R R Y. Yeah. That'll get you a discount off Carnivore Crisp. We have discount for Keto Chow. We have discount for Redmond's. All those are in the show notes every time we go live. So if you are ready to stock up and you need a discount code, you can just come back to a, a YouTube live and find those links yep. in the description. Um, the speakers are like the big dogs at KetoCon usually. This one's going to be there speaking. I'm not a big dog, so I don't get to speak at KetoCon. <laughs> I feel like everybody will be at our booth talking to you while I'm while I'm speaking. That's what so. I think. I I've think got so. several videos planned for the coming uh, days and weeks. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And, and we're if gonna... you haven't got enough of us, yeah, you can go join the community um, for just five dollars a <clears> month, <throat> and you can cancel at any time. And with that $5, you get into all the challenges. So this month we're yep. doing the War. Next month we're doing Triple B&E. And after that, we're doing uh, Elimination Diet Protocol yep. Reintroduction. We do scheduled extra lives in there. We do impromptu, out of the blue lives. Yep. You never know what we're going to do in the group. And it's growing quickly. And it's the most su supportive group of, of people that I've ever been associated with. And so if you're looking for a tribe, if you're looking for somebody to walk with on this journey, join our community. The link is, is scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Just go to that address and it's five bucks a month and you can cancel anytime. What do you got to lose? All right, guys, that's it. We're out of here. I'm going to go play with Bonnie blue and we love you and we mean it. And we'll see you next time.